disappearing. They're ready to run. They're racing. Advocate Elaise Vinsky left quickly. Also pushing up Baron Bostock City Circle from the inside. But Morgs Freeman's going to drop out to the tail. And round the point's going to pr really press on here and get up there and put some pressure on Lace Vinsky as they'd settled. By the 900, Lace Vinsky, the favourite, in front of half a length round the point. City Circle easing off the heels. Third down on the inside. Baron Bostock around them. Three wide in the early part. The speed had come off. Right behind those, need action up running about fifth the length and a half flying target heroic words back behind them Morgs Freeman he's just getting a little keen there having to ease off heels and Advocator had dropped out to last but Lace Vinsky will bring them to the home corner 500 from the judge it's Lace Vinsky three quarters on round the point Baron Bostock has covered some extra ground City Circle tucked away down on the inside from need action Morgs Freeman finally gets around heels to the outside at the 300 though and Lace Vinsky now called upon by Carberry a length and a half in front of round the point Morgs Freeman running on with neat action down the outside, but it's Lace Vinsky clear. Lace Vinsky with 100 left to go. A length and a half in front. He's going to crack it today, Lace Vinsky. Lace Vinsky finally back into the winner's list. Has scored from maybe flying target, driving through in the centre late, or Morgs Freeman. Won't be much in it there. Neat action close up, so's round the point in City Circle. And they were followed by Advocator. Baron Bostock had compounded after covering ground. He dropped right out to run second from last. The tail ender, heroic words. Well, there had to be a day eventually, and today is the day for Lace Vinsky. Number three, the winner. After so many minor placings littered through the horse's 12-start career, he notches up his second victory, and that's come on top of eight minor placings. Six seconds. Flying target will be second. Morgs Freeman or City Circle, in fact, kicks on the rail, and it is there for third and fourth. Three the winner, Lay Savinsky. Second placing going the way of number nine, Flying Target, who came with a rush between horses late in the race. Morgs Freeman is third. Fourth is City Circle. Three, nine, four and two official placings. Lay Savinsky is owned by the Mungrup Stud Syndicate, Lex and Shirley Piper. That's a double for those owners this afternoon. They're involved in the very exciting two-year-old Gemma's son, also part owned by Karen Piper Hyman and Kim Hyman as well. A playing god four-year-old and out of the Oratorio Mayor Lacey. Rewarded for some real consistency and trained by Simon Miller. Second home, flying target, Galar Mayor from which target for Jerry Stelmack, Bill O'Byrne, W. Kendall, E. Gisarelli, D. Ward, Mrs. C. Ward, trained by Christine Stelmack with W. Piker board. And third four, Morgs Freeman from the back. A playing god four-year-old out of Movie World. Raced by A.L. Smith. Trained by Robin Todd Harvey. And ridden by Sean McGruddy. 1.11.94 is the time there that they'd run. And it's one and a quarter and a long head. The margins. Now it's a dead heat for fifth between five and six. Need action and round the point. They dead heated for fifth. Race four, the valet Malcolm Clements handicap over the sprint distance, 1,000 metres for race four. Number four is out, excellent dream, and starting time, 2.44. So we can go down now to the yard and uh, no doubt an exasperated Simon Miller uh, breathes a collective sigh of relief after seeing Lace Vinsky finally crack it after what has been a very, very frustrating run in the minor placings, Brittany. It certainly has been. He has been a little bit of a bridesmaid, Lace Vinsky. Simon, you must have felt relief even 100 metres after the start that he wasn't going to have a run like he did last. Yeah, I agree, Brittany. And um, if you go back through his form, he's had really good form and consistent, but if you actually break it down, he's only won a maiden. So I was getting a bit nervous that uh, he was going to be the, the continuous bridesmaid, but uh, it just I thought I'd drop him back into this race and it looked his to lose and uh, he got the job done. As soon as you saw him rolling out in front as comfortably as he was, were you very confident? Oh, I was because it was a significant class drop um, and he's had a really good week of it and um, Paddy's only got the one rod for the day, he's on holidays and just ducked back and he, he couldn't give it up. He thought if this thing gets up and I'm not on it. So uh, that was a good sign as well. He worked really well Tuesday. Oh, that's good from Paddy to uh, come in on his holiday. What about in the next? Drink what you like. It's obviously the punter's horse for the weekend. William Pike goes aboard. What are your expectations? Yeah, she's a good filly. It's a tricky race. Uh, 
Neville's horse is obviously really good, and, and as is uh, Luke Fernie. So there'll be a, a lot of speed. I just don't know where we'll get to in running, but I'll leave that up to, to um, Pike. But it, it is a bit of an omen, isn't it? Certainly is. Best of luck in the next one. Well done. Lace Finsky really deserved this yeah, one. Well, I can't lay claims to that. Uh, Shirley and Karen gave instructions. Uh, I said, Luke, every time I give instructions, he gets beat. So uh, you guys can step up to the plate. So uh, Shirley, Shirley said, um, just win. <laughs> and uh, um, I can't remember what Karen said, but anyway, that was really good. They just stepped in and I said, well, I'm out. He said, keep oh, cool, Paddy's cool. saying. Shirley said, keep cool, and Karen said, just win. Well, he's done both of those things. Well done to Simon Miller and Scotty Embry's catching up with Paddy Carberry. Absolutely. When you take instructions from Shirley Piper, Paddy, you know you just have to win. Uh, today, able to find the front cut quite comfortably? Well, all of Simon's instructions went out the window as soon as Shirley and Karen spoke. It was like no one else was there. What, and what about you? What about you? What were you? What were you thinking at the top of the home straight? Uh, I was thinking, I uh, hope there's no, no bugger chasing us down, so we run second again. Um, no, he, he enjoyed a good trip. He, he jumped really well. I just ambled across nice, and um, it's a straight line. There's no point rushing across, and just like to get him into a nice breathing rhythm. And you know, he put his head down really nice today, and. I mean, he's been in work a long time, but he's really just getting the idea of starting to race nicely and doing it how we want him to do it. Um, but he sort of, I was able to sneak away without actually really going for him. And I've sort of found in the past, he, he probably doesn't like too much of the whip. He'll take a little bit of it, but I think at the end of the day, he's always doing his best. And um, people say he's a bit of a bridesmaid and yeah, sure he is, but he has been beaten so up by some decent horses that, um, you know, that have got quite good wraps on them. So he's probably been a bit unlucky in that way, um, but he's ever consistent. What about you, a quiet day at the office in the middle of a holiday, is that true? Well, um, been down in Bustenham for a few days and uh, I worked this bloke on Tuesday before I left and I thought, there's no way I can't ride him on his work. And uh, the other thing was, I didn't want to get off him anyway because sure enough, he'd win and I, if I'm not on, I'd, I'd be, I don't know what I'd be doing on Bustenham Beach. I, yeah, I wouldn't want to be walking past anyone that uh, give me a funny look anyway. You're a lot smarter than me. I've been tipping him and I jumped ship today. What well on, Paddy. Maybe that's what the problem was. <laughs> Figured it out.